As Papua New Guinea is advancing in the modern developing world, so much more is yet to be gained in order to be truly self-reliant and sustainable. Prominent businessman and former governor of Medang, Se Peter Bata, encourages people to think outside the box by letting people come in from outside if Papua New Guinea really wants proper development to take place. Moreover, Se Peter states that in order for people to be self-reliant and sustainable, Papua New Guinea needs more agricultural experts and entrepreneurs in the country. To become self-reliant, but to become self-reliant, you have to need some help from the government to make it happen. And this is the National Development Bank, in position and jobs and the Department of um, Rural Agriculture. To, to, to show people how they become more reliant, self-sustainable with themselves so they don't become dependent on the government on handouts. If you give handouts out, they should always be for a, a, the reason of uh, developing something that's sustainable. But to be fully self-reliant, Sir Peter says it is imminent to seek government assistance through its agencies such as the National Development Bank to be able to participate economically in the country's development. There are also ways through which Papua New Guineans can live happy and sustainable lives, he added. And if you're going to educate people, educate them to do something that they can make money out of. We don't need any more lawyers in this country. I think we're all sick and tired of by me courting you. I mean, it's, it's, it's gone beyond a joke. Uh, I'll court penis now, in time of work. And I think this is what we have to start really seriously considering if we want to be self-sustainable. Um, we need agricultural experts. We need entrepreneurs. We need people to encourage the entrepreneurs. The retired politician is keen to see that development takes place, not only in the country's major centres, but rather right across the nation for equal benefit sharing. With due respect to Port Moresby's capacity in hosting the recent 15th Pacific Games, Sir Peter said other centres could also be given adequate government attention so that they be on par with the nation's capital when it comes to such regional and international events. And I must say that even though I'm against the South Pacific Games being held in Port Moresby, I am a, I'm very much for it as regard to building up our confidence in the, in the country. How much that's worth, I can't put a cost to, I can't put a, an amount to. But I think it's extremely important that Papua New Guinea sees itself as a country that can take on challenges such as the South Pacific Games and APEC, if you want to, as well. Um, I think it, it did remarkably well. So that's a positive aspect that I see. I just feel as though it was a shame that it wasn't shared with so many more people in Papua New Guinea. I don't know why we haven't got an athletic stadium here in Madang. <laughs> or a public uh, 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 swimming pool or some other form of facility that could have been sh shared from Port Moresby. So they're, they're just personal things, but from the overall point of view of uh, that what the Games has done for Papua New Guinea, it's put us on the map. Really has put us on the map, so it was uh, very well arranged, very expensive, but maybe the cost that we spent was worth it in terms of the future of Papua New Guinea. Tapotovilu for Tumuna TV News, Medang.